Marsha Lewis, and it's a privilege and pleasure to be the ministerial assistant pastoral here at Unity of Nashville. Reverend John is on break, and he'll be back next week. And we are so happy that you've decided to join us this morning, whether you just happened upon us or you've been with us forever. I affirm that you will have a heart impression from a word or a lyric, an image, and that this will fuel your journey as you seek spiritual good. It was truly wonderful to see many of you at our Christmas Eve candlelight service and our burning bowl service this last week. My heart was really warmed and lifted to be able to see all of your smiles through your eyes as you came by. And I felt the sanctuary was just alive with love, and it was so special. And Vic Sorrell, who many of you know, is with us today, and we'll be bringing the talk a little later on. Unity was established first as a prayer ministry. Prayer by way of affirmative thinking, seeing things as they truly are, and we continue that tradition by praying with each other every night at 9 p.m. and upon rising each day. This is creating a field of grace. And the prayer for this week is printed in your e hymnal. So let's affirm that together right now. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. I am is the essence of my being, neither new nor old, but the eternal I am, with trust and thanks. And the people said together, Amen. So this is a prayer ministry. And it's been in this church for over 100 years and with silent unity for over 125 years. So if you would, please go to your keyboard and let us know how we can support you in prayer this week. 
When you actively participate, this is how we create a field of grace. Where one is blessed, all are blessed. So take a moment now, won't you? facing financial hardship and continue to donate, we thank you so very much. And for those who are without work and without income, it's still critically important for you to participate with, in your consciousness as some way of paying it forward. So with our gratitude practice this morning, please go to your keyboard and share what you're especially grateful for. We really appreciate seeing these because we know that there is good being created in your life. So let's join together and flow through me. Be 
as one Imagine no possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger Brotherhood of man Imagine all the people Sharing all the world You, you may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you join us And the world will be as one You may say that I'm a dreamer Good morning, Dawn. Wow, my friend. It felt like uh, 2008 again, watching her sing. It's been, it's been a minute. And yet, everything has changed from the way that the world was when I first met Dawn Freeman in this room, except one thing. Love is always the same, and love has not changed. Good morning. Would you please hold with me while I affirm the following? We are as enough now as we could ever be, worthy of full, healthy, prosperous life experiences, and we are safe to co-create those life experiences now, and so it is. If you desire to make a difference in the world, you must be different from the world. Elaine S. Dalton, who incidentally was the 13th president of the Young Women Organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, said those words. And I believe they're true, I feel they're true, but I know what also must be true is that if you desire to make a difference in yourself, in your life, then you must somehow become different from the life that you remember being yours. I think that many of us watching and in the room would agree that we have a certain power when we are willing to shift our focus to a world that we may not be able to see, but a world whose effects we're able to feel. When the shift inside of us occurs, the shift from a thought system based in fear to a thought system based in love, and just like the world, as we show up in any moment already deciding that we know what's going on, that we know what it means and we know how we feel about it all, then we tend to recreate what we've always known. Many of you may relate to that place when you find new thought or you find a new spirituality and you feel like you have some new shared language. And the next thing you know, you're in, I don't know, a coffee shop or on the phone with, with a fellow new thought student and you, and you hear yourself saying, well, now that's why that is. 
Well, you know what that's about, right? Well, the only reason she does that is, and it happens. It's part of it. Because we feel a sense of freedom. We feel a sense of understanding. We feel a sense of recognition that we've never known before as the result of learning about the truth of who we are. And as a result, unlearning the truth that we were taught. But what the ego has already defined, love has little room to explain. Happy New Year. For good reason, I feel glad to experience this clean slate moment, these moments that we're breathing through together right now. There is a feeling of freshness. There is a feeling of of hope, of renewed intention and spirit. And for good's purposes, I also feel extremely focused because it dawned on me right today on the way here as I was thinking about this talk that we are in the year of the VIP, the very important precipice. We are in a place where collectively 2020 has broken us open. We're available, we're aware, and we're paying attention in a way that could not have been possible otherwise. We are choosing now what everything that was brought up for us to see will be. Literally, one breath at a time. It's about our, imbo- our opportunity to embody the shifts that have been shown to us, the shifts that are our opportunity. But now we must remain awake and reverent long enough that we can actually walk out the embodiment of the differences. You may have heard it explained as I have that spiritual insight, spiritual wisdom happens in an instant, vertically all at once. But it takes us in the material world time horizontally to walk out the embodiment of those changes. And the way that it happens, you know, you'll be standing in a checkout line or you'll be brushing your teeth and all of a sudden we realize something we heard someone say weeks ago or something that we read months ago just made life make sense in a different way. And it makes living differently make sense. And that's where we are. We're in a place where living differently is making sense. And so, as always... It's a gift to be here with you today. It's a gift to speak about a truth that has completely turned my life upside down, right side up. And I love being in this space and talking about this conversation because we are literally choosing our evolution as opposed to our decline as we entertain the notion of truth with a capital T, of love. We are literally choosing our health, our radiance, our vitality, our creativity, our peace, prosperity, abundance, well-being, and yes, our thrive, our thrive. Even as we entertain these notions together. And because great minds discuss ideas, when the world around us is experiencing a collective crucifixion, 
meaning it's demonstrating the breakdown and decay of a collective thought system rooted in fear, then it's the imperative time. It's the very important precipice for each of us to be facilitating our own personal resurrection, which is simply the internal shift in our perspective, in our perception from fear to love. So I submit today that in all and with all the cosmic support that is as the result of the great conjunction that we've been talking about for weeks, Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius, the great conjunction, our work today, our work this day, this year, is to recommit to love every moment. Imagine. Why love? We have a lot of notions. But why love? Why love with a capital L? Because we are a people in need of many miracles. We are a people who deserve miracles. Miracles are our birthright. They occur naturally in the presence of love. And yet, That's not always the first thought we have when our feet hit the floor in the morning. I was having a conversation last week with one of my coaching clients, and they were heavy-hearted, as many of us are in this time. And I said to them, I said, Don't don't respond immediately. Take a second. How do you feel? And they looked at me after about 25 seconds and said, I feel guilty. I feel so guilty. I feel guilty because I haven't always gotten it right. I feel guilty because I've judged myself when I haven't gotten it right. I've beaten myself up for not always getting it right. I feel guilty because I've beaten up on other people for not getting it right. And then I've beaten up on myself for beating up on other people, figuratively speaking, in their case. Energetically judging, condemning. And I feel so guilty. I said, imagine what your life would be without guilt. Guilt free. And they said, I've been practicing guilt for 46 years. How could I even begin to know what my life could be like if I weren't guilty? And it's true. They went on to say, everybody who knows me and who loves me tells me all the time, I just wish you could love yourself. And it makes me so angry because I don't even know what that means. I don't even know how to start. And I think it's true. I think a lot of us could use a whiteboard with action steps. We really could stand to benefit from spelling that out. And I think it begins by realizing as A Course in Miracles would have us believe, guilt is the central problem of the world. So start there. I can forgive myself. I can, sorry, I can forgive others, but I can't forgive myself. It's very common, and it's a tool of the ego. The ego being the part of our mind that thinks in separation from love the part of our mind that has gone rogue, so to speak, away from God, away from love, to create of itself. And guilt is one of the things that the ego uses to reinforce to us that we are inherently bad. Not that we have done bad things, but that we are bad. 
irreparably damaged. And a lot of times we've been taught that our fundamental nature is guilt and that we must be saved by grace. But this morning I ask you to consider what is grace but a decision? How else is grace made welcome but a decision to align our thoughts with the thoughts of love, creating the space for grace to happen? So if guilt is the central problem of the world, then why does it so readily happen? Why haven't we figured it out? Why haven't we zeroed in on it? We do everything else, it seems, right? Every other problem, it seems like we can find a fix. Yet in this world, what best way for us to create this new year that we're all so ready for, but to remember that the reason we feel guilty most of the time is because we've forgotten to love ourselves and others all the time. All the time. Does that mean that there aren't consequences to to harmful behavior? No, that does not mean there aren't consequences. It means our focus remains in the realm of the truth. We reckon with behavior. We focus on the truth, the ultimate truth, the love that we know ourselves to be. That's exactly what God does. We know God does not judge, and yet we do. We have that option as the result of our free will. And while we can choose any thought, we might choose to think we can't change the law. And the law is that we experience the effects of every thought we think. So while we can choose what we think, we can't change the law. And another's bad behavior is a tragic reason to withhold our love. Because in doing so, we move into absolute alignment with our ego. And we already established where that lands us. Lack, limitation, fear, anxiety, dread, illness. Withholding our love is literally withholding our life. So what we find then is forgiveness, the superpower that enables us to love ourselves and each other all the time, a tenacious, continual commitment to forgiveness. And yet in it, we are our most powerful, our most truthful, our most intelligent, our most efficient, and our most creative. Because in forgiveness, there's a connection. In the space of our willingness to entertain forgiveness, it dawns on us that no one of us has always gotten it right or always gotten it wrong. As the result of our dance with fear, we all make mistakes. We all get it wrong. And we're creative no matter our focus. So therefore, when our focus is fearful, that which we create can be harmful. We all share this tendency. And so there is our connection to each other. But we find as we unite to resolve the effects of our mistakes, we're led back to ourselves for surely It is love as us that does the forgiving and enables our consciousness to let go and let it be well. 
Let it be well. Imagine. Imagine a world committed to the ultimate innocence of its humanity. And yet it is clearly that simple. So many texts, so many words, so much material we study, and yet it really boils down to are you innocent or are you guilty? You choose every day. When we think of Jesus' example, of how to experience the fullness of our power in this world. We're reminded that we must be in this world, but not of this world. Forgiveness, love, restoration, these are all concepts available to us that are not necessarily of this world. And A Course in Miracles teaches that the vision of one world will cost you the vision of the other. So where is our vision? I know we're envisioning a lot of things. It's the perfect time to do that. But where is our vision? Do we see ourselves as innocent, ultimately innocent, eternally innocent? in a way that can provide us the space of freedom to create what we deserve, to hold in consciousness a space for other people of their innocence, a space that they deserve. In this world, but not of this world. Love is the way to the highest expressions of our life's possibilities. The highest expressions. And as we've seen, there is no more time. Our highest expressions have to be our highest priority. The collective crucifixion of the world reminds us daily that there is no more time for us to be wondering about the possibility that we might entertain the notion of forgiveness one day. It's time. Forgive it all. Forgive everything. Forgive it now. Because our innocence is our magic. We must reclaim. We must realign. We must reconnect with our innocence now in order to avoid recreating more of the same. I think so many of us, it's so common. You hear wherever we go, people are talking about getting their brand right. If you want to create a life that feels good, get your forgiveness right. Get your heart right. Free up that space. Be available to the love that you are. The love that we all are. Because it is not naive believing that love must become our bottom line. What's naive is believing our species will survive another 200 years if it does not. It's my favorite quote. It's Marianne Williamson. Love must become our bottom line. And our guilt is merely our own experience of separation that happens as the result of our judgment, of our willingness to edge God out because God does not judge. God loves all the time. We've said here before that enlightenment is a shift in self-perception. The changing of mind is simply the openness and the allowance of a different thought about the same life. A different thought about the same life, a new thought. New thoughts being the building blocks of new life. 
I saw a meme on social media this week that said, have you actually considered the fact that this year is actually named 2021? W-O-N. 2021. And I thought, yes. 2021, our attention. 2021, our availability. 2021, our focus in a way and our presence now in a way that's unparalleled. We are awake. And the truth is, the part that you play in the unfoldment of what wants to happen through us, as us, for the work and the purposes of love cannot be played by anyone else. If your light doesn't shine, there are no understudies. It simply will not be. No one can do your part the way you can do yours. So imagine. Imagine how your light shines and where it might serve and how it might serve. Imagine the things you would allow yourself to do, the places you would allow yourself to go, the words you would allow yourself to speak if first you simply allowed yourself to be innocent. Innocent. All the places you would go. And imagine that now, like never before, enough of us together are getting this all over the world. Because love will restore the years the locusts have eaten. The locusts being the negative thoughts, the fear, the doubt, the disappointment, the self-betrayal. Love as your innocence, as my innocence. Just like everything had been held in escrow all that time, love will restore the years through a miraculous shift in perception from guilt to innocence. Imagine you, innocent, powerful, willing to perceive through a lens of ultimate innocence yourself and everyone else, holding that first and everything else secondary for the work of love, for the healing, the evolution, and the continuation of our species, for the good of all. Imagine. Namaste. <sighs> it's been a pleasure to be with you today, as always, every time. And I, I see for you a shift today, a shift in the way that you see yourself. I see that for myself. I see that for all of us, that we may see ourselves today as the light that we are in love. And now for everyone all over the world, and each of us, we say together our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you back here next week on Sunday. Reverend John will be back. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be
be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Let